Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. I'm sitting at my normal filming spot and I wanted to talk to you about side hustles and business, but the reason why is because a subscriber just found my, my filming location. And it's funny because he's not the only one that's done it and it's it's always a pleasure. However, when someone comes speeding up real quick, I always look at him, give him the stink eye, like, who is this? I don't know what's going on. Uh, because usually people see me filming and they love, they don't know who I am and they love to drive really loud past me or accelerate or, you know, people just want to be jerks. But I've told you this before and I'll say it again. Every single time I've met one of you, it has been the greatest opportunity of my life. And I, I cannot, and maybe that person, I'm not going to put their name in to embarrass them, but maybe I will say he's from Washington, uh, was driving through California and grew up in this area. and recognized some of the film locations and was driving by the freeway highway 101 right over here and saw me sitting here and not even in my car this is this isn't even my car um and decided to come around and he actually brought me something that i absolutely love i shouldn't show you guys i don't need anyone giving me these things but i i do i mean the ninja loves the seas truffles <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know this and he came up and he goes can i can i talk to you and, and give you this gift i'm like i'm on a diet i'm gonna stare at these things for like a month i'll come back in a month and but um he's a very successful man as as every single time i meet you guys and he didn't want to rush me he's i, I didn't want to get in the way and i go no no i'll drop everything to talk to you like i want to meet i want to meet all of you guys uh because you're amazing people you're amazing people and he's an architect and he works uh and for a company, I don't want to divulge too much, but, uh, you know, I said, what do you, what are you doing for side hustle? What do you want to do in the crash? And I, I asked him all these questions, you know, I said, Eric, do you want any, you know, you want any financial advice? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a financial train wreck. I'm just joking. Uh, and so we, we talked about money for a little bit and, and dreams and I gave him a couple ideas and it's really a passion of mine to be able to watch people that go from an employee to an employer or stay an employee, but do a side hustle and watch that side hustle make more money than their day job. I'm living proof of that. You guys know that I've been a fire, career firefighter and I've just had to take a leave of absence to handle some personal things in my life uh, and my family's life. Uh, but I'm gonna be going back. But for years, for, for actually decades, uh, since the year 2001, my side hustles have made way more than my career. And I've been able to take that money and invest it and build it uh, and enjoy it, right? Because today in this day and age, it's very hard to enjoy a very comfortable life if you were just to literally get a $100,000 a year job right now and go, hey, I want to go buy a house. You know, if you're living in California or Phoenix or New York or Florida, I mean, it's almost like forget about it, right? Because you're like the cost of food and having a family and all stuff, it's just, it's hard. You need a side hustle. Well, I was talking to this gentleman and uh, and I gave him an idea and I was I was like, you know, specific and i'll just give you this uh he's a successful architect and i said have you ever thought about starting a side hustle and he goes well i'm a contractor too you know i've actually been in the construction trade as a matter of fact his first spec house was located about a mile from my last flip in california right as the market was crashing and he said he bought it right he built it right at the top he got out by the skin of his teeth but he wants to do it again and uh his timing was just a little off right and uh, like I said, I, I sold mine in like mid 2006 or early 2007. Uh, and I got out by the skin of my teeth as well. And so I said, you know, you should be looking into consulting. You should be looking into, you know, building plans for for these, uh, you know, build a investor centric sort of or uh, with keeping investors in mind, uh, sell plans to beautiful little uh, apartments, like tiny little ones, like, you know, not tiny homes, but just beautiful little homes that you could add on. You could see the wheels turning in his head. I said, the most important thing is, I was looking at his car, really nice car. I said, you turn the car into a write-off. I know it sounds funny, but you can't do that unless you have your own business. And it doesn't have to be a massively successful business. It doesn't have to be a business with tons of employees. It could be just you making plans, an idea that you want to sell you know, and you fund a bank account, you, you do all the things right, where you, you literally put it into, you organize it, you get a business bank account, you get a business name, a little bit of advertising. And then I told him about, you know, um, using social media and how to use social media to blow that business up, you know, and that's the kind of stuff that I want to encourage every single one of you to do. Not everyone's a business person. You don't want to know why you're not. It's because you haven't been given the just very simple nuts and bolts ways to start a business or a side hustle honestly and that's why i started the course it's so darn easy 
I started the course by showing you how to go to your garage and sell things at a garage sale. And it sounds funny, how to have a successful garage sale. To make the most amount of money in your pocket, what you should sell there and what you should sell online, and then how to double that money and then double it again and double it again. And I know people, and I've been there, I've made uh, my first year selling things on eBay back in the year 2000, I made 20,000 bucks cash on my days off. And that 20 grand flipped into houses. My first house I bought with it, before you knew it, one year later, I started flipping houses. And you want to talk about going from 20 grand in a year to 20 grand in a month. And that was a lot back then in the year 2002, 2003, 20 grand a month. It's important that people understand how simple these things are, but most people get caught up in thinking about business owners and entrepreneurship as something big, where really it's just going and selling something out of your garage for a profit and finding out, oh man, I got like 20 phone calls on that. And I sold it for X. Like I, you know, I sold it for a hundred bucks. I got 20 phone calls. Maybe I priced it a little low. Let me go try and find another one for like 60 bucks. Buy it, put it back on. I sold it for 120 and it just goes and it goes. And it's so easy, but most people don't have the nuts and bolts. So like I said, every time I meet you guys, I am thrilled and I will gladly stop everything. I'm like, uh, unless I'm running, it's happened. I'm running through the airport. <laughs> I'm late for my flight. But I want people to be emboldened and encouraged and, and start to go crush it and absolutely take that money and just build and build and build and build. And before you know it, we're all going to be sitting on yachts together. And it's not going to be like we're going to be cocky on yachts. Although I'm going to sing the, I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. I'll sing that song. I don't care. But um, it's because think about what the money can do to help people. And really, a lot of times we don't need to feed people. We need to teach them how to be feed themselves. That's the most important part. Teach people, not don't give them a loaf of bread. Teach them how to make the bread and they'll eat forever. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out.